Hello my lovelies, it is time for another book outlet haul, so stay tuned. So today I have four book outlet boxes here to share with you today. Yeah, I have a hard time ordering just like one box, <laughs> but three of these are on a smaller side and then one is like just a little longer. So let's dig in to this first box. Okay, I've got my packing receipt and we've got paper. I had some ridiculous books. <laughs> so this first one is Plato and a platypus walk into a bar. Understanding philosophy through jokes by Thomas Cathcart and Daniel Klein. This says logic. Sherlock's Ho Sherlock Holmes never deduced anything. Existentialism. You haven't lived until you think about death all the time. Language. It all depends on what your definition of is is. Ethics. A sadist and a masochist who follows the golden rules. Or the golden rule. I just thought it'd be interesting. And it's a little short book. It's only, when you don't include the glossary and all that stuff, it is 191 pages. So, awesome. That'll be fun. I'm going to stick these over here. Okay, next up we have... Books one and three of the Rosewood Chronicles. Uh, I can't remember if book two, if I ordered that or not, and it's in one of these other boxes, but in this box, I think it's just the, the two, the book one and three. So we have Undercover Princess and The Lost Princess by Connie Glenn. I thought these were really cute. And this says, Lottie Pumpkin is an ordinary girl who has spent her life longing for the extraordinary. Ellie Wolf is the crown princess of, of Mardova who wants nothing more than a chance at an ordinary life. When fate puts Lottie and Ellie in the same dorm room at the prestigious Rosewood Hall, there's only one solution, for the girls to swap identities and live the lives they've always dreamed of. But at Rosewood, a secret never stays secret for long. Someone in the school is on to them, and if the truth is revealed, the results may be more treacherous than they ever expected. And I think that sounds super cute. I also think I'm going to move the camera a little bit closer because I'm having to really reach. Okay, I think that'll be better. All right, next up we have Escape Room by Marin Stoffels. This is also a really short one. This says, all they need to do is get out. Alyssa, Skye, Milas, and Mint are ready for a night of fun at the escape room. It's simple. Choose their game, get locked in a room, find the clues, solve the puzzles, and escape the room in 60 minutes. But what happens if the game master has no intention of letting them go? And we love escape rooms, so I think this will be a fun read. Also, super short. It looks like it is... 204 pages and it's a very floppy paperback. I'm excited to read this one as well. Then we have This Is Not The Jess Show by Anna Carey and this one, oh cute end pages. Got little rainbows and unicorns. That's a cute like it's like almost a, a marbly looking kind of cover. Okay, this says the year is 1998. And like any other teenager, Jess Flynn is just trying to get through her junior year without drama. But drama seems to keep finding her. Between a new crush on her childhood best friend, overprotective parents cramping her social life, and her younger sister's worsening health, the only constant, only constant is change and her hometown of Swickly, which feels smaller by the day. Swickly is getting weirder by the day, too. Half the population has been struck down by a mysterious flu. Conversations seem to end awkwardly when Jess enters the room. 
and then one day a tiny sleek black device with an apple logo on it falls out of her best friend's backpack and lands at jess's feet but the first iphone won't exist for another nine years suddenly jess has more questions than answers about her life and as she races to uncover the truth about her family her friendships and her town one thing becomes clear we all have our own version of reality Black Mirror meets my so-called life in this fast-paced, timely novel about separating fact from fiction and the links one girl will go to live her own t on her own terms. This gives me, oh gosh, the Truman Show vibes. That's kind of what I'm getting, but like set in the 90s, but maybe everybody else is like in on the fact that this is a show and they're like set, they're actually current day. I don't know. That's just what the vibes I get from that synopsis. But it sounds very cute. Also, I was a teenager during that time, so I'll probably catch a lot of the ref like 90s references and stuff, so I'm excited to read it. Okay, the last book in this box is actually a signed copy of The Brightest Night by Jennifer L. Armentrout, and oh, that's exciting. Okay, let's see. Where is the signature? There we go. This one's just blue like that. Okay, so this is actually book three in the Origin series. And, uh, well, I wanted to get it because it was a signed edition. And I love Jennifer L. Armentrout's writing. I actually don't think... I have the first two books in this series, but I want to get them. And I guess I thought I had them when I ordered it, but I, I would have ordered this regardless because it is a signed copy. Um, also, I see that like on Goodreads that it looks like they did like uh, cover changes for this book forward. So it's like book one and book two have matching covers and then this doesn't match at all. Uh, but let me tell you what it says here. From the author of Obsidian, Onyx, and Opal, a new series set in Armand Trout's New York Times bestselling Lux Universe. In this romantic YA science fiction series, 17 year old Evie Dasher deals with the devastating consequences of humanity's war with the alien Luxon. Four years after its end, she is swept up in an alien resistance and, in the process, falls in love and discovers the dark secrets of her past. And sorry if y'all hear some banging around. Einstein is currently flopping all over the place in his kennel and he's making a bunch of noise. So that is the last book in this box and I'm very excited for this series. Okay, now on to the next box. Okay, we've got some paper and my packing slip. Okay, yes, I did get book two, and it's in this box. So, we have book two, Princess in Practice. And these are just so freaking cute. Hold on, let me hold them all up together. Like, here are the spines together. These are so cute. Okay, so I just recently ordered the Royal Wii. And in this box, I have the sequel to that, The Air Affair, which is this one right here. Now, the, the edition that I ordered was supposed to have the illustrated cover like this um, of the Royal Wee, but it didn't. It ended up giving me one with a different cover, which, whatever. But, yeah. So, I can tell you about the Royal Wee, since this is the second one. This is The Air Affair. Uh, and this is by Heather Cox and Jessica Morgan. Uh, American Rebecca Porter was never one for fairy tales. Her twin sister Lacey has always been the romantic who fantasized about glamour and royalty, fame and fortune. Yet it's Bex who seeks adventure at Oxford and finds herself living down the hall from Prince Nicholas, Great Britain's future king. And when Bex can't resist falling for Nick, the person behind the prince, it propels her into a world she did not expect to inhabit. Under the spotlight, she is not prepared to face. Dating Nick immerses Bex in a ritzy society, dazzling ski trips, and dinners at Kensington Palace with him and his charming, troublesome brother, Freddie. But the relationship also comes with unimaginable baggage, hysterical tabloids, 
Nick's sparkling and far more suitable ex-girlfriends, and a royal family whose private life is much thornier and more tragic than anyone on the outside knows. The pressures are almost too much to bear as Beck struggles to reconcile the man she loves with the monarch he's fated to become, which is how she gets into trouble. Now on the eve of the wedding of the century, Bex is faced with whether everything she's sacrificed for, her career, her home, her family, maybe even herself, will have been for nothing. And it sounds super cute. It also kind of vaguely sounds like a movie I've watched, but also gives me like Meghan Markle and all them vibes. The whole royal family now. Okay, next up we have I'll Be the One by Lila Lee. And I think this is such a cute cover. This says, Sky Shin has heard it all. Fat girls can't dance. Shouldn't wear bright colors. Shouldn't call attention to themselves. But Sky dreams of joining the glittering, intense world of K-pop. And to do that, she's about to break all the rules that society, the media, and even her own mother have set for girls like her. When Sky nails her audition in an internationally televised competition looking for the next K-pop star, she's immediately swept into a whirlwind of countless practices, shocking performances, and the drama that comes with reality TV. What she doesn't count on are the highly fatphobic beauty standards of the Korean entertainment industry or her sudden, sudden media fame and scrutiny. Luckily, she doesn't have to go it alone. In the competition, Sky meets new friends and finds herself partnered with fellow competitor Henry Cho, a fairly, an unfairly cute celebrity model. Sparks soon fly, and with the support of her friends and Harry, Sky sets her sights on becoming the world's first plus-size K-pop star by winning the competition without losing herself. Lila Lee's effervescent debut is a celebration of body positivity first love, and a talented young woman claiming her space. And I think it sounds so cute. Next up, we have Fledgling by Octavia E. Butler. And I know this is like a, a vampire thriller kind of thing. It says, Shori is a mystery. Found alone in the woods, she appears to be a little black girl with traumatic, traumatic amnesia and near-fatal wounds. But Shori is a 53-year-old vampire with a ravenous hunger for blood, the lost child of an ancient species of near immortals who live in dark symb symbiosis with humanity. Genetically modified to be able to walk in daylight, Shori now becomes the target of a vast plot to destroy her and her kind. And in the final apocalyptic battle, her survival will depend on whether all humans are bigots or all bigots are humans. Okay, next up we have... Uh, the Last Apprentice, Revenge of the Witch by Joseph Delaney. And it says, see it before you see it. Soon to be a major motion picture, Seventh Son. And I don't know. It just kind of caught my attention. I thought it sounded interesting. Uh, it says, the book will haunt you. It's an international bestseller, but don't read it after dark. This is where it all begins. Book one of The Last Apprentice series. The powers of evil are strengthening, and only one man holds them back, now that man needs an apprentice. Tom Ward, the seventh son of a seventh son, has been chosen. Many apprentices have come before. They have failed or fled or died. If Tom succeeds, and if he survives, he'll be the last apprentice. So, it, and it says now a major motion picture, seventh son, starring Jeff Bridges, Julianne Moore, and Ben Barnes. Never seen the movie. Don't know when it came out. But, I don't know, something, the cover didn't necessarily draw me in, but something, I don't know, something drew me in, and it sounded interesting, so I thought I'd give it a go. Oh, there's like, some illustrations throughout. Like, uh, it looks like maybe at the beginning of each chapter or something. So, interesting. Okay, then the last book in this box is Never After by Melissa De La Cruz, The Thirteenth Fairy. And this is like fairy tale retelling kind of thing, and I love that. This says, nothing ever happens in 
Philomena Jefferson chose small California town. The sun shines every day, the grass is always green, and while her school, school swears there's no bullying, she knows firsthand that isn't true. But one day, when she's walking home from her favorite bookstore, something strange occurs. Philomena is being followed by Jack Stalker, one of the heroes in Never After, a book series she loves. She must be dreaming, or still reading, but Jack is insistent. He's real. The stories are real, and Philomena must come at once. Soon, she's thrust into a world of fairies and princesses, sorcerers and slayers, where an evil queen drives her army to erase the fairy tribes. To save the kingdom, Philomena must find the truth behind the tale of the 13th fairy before the cycle of destruction begins again. Not really a fairy tale retelling, but still fairy tales, and it's a bookish book. I am excited so much for this. I hope I love it. Uh, I can't remember, but I feel like this is middle grade. But I'm very, very, very excited. Okay, so that is everything in this box. Okay, now on to the next box. All right, we got some paper. I don't know where my packing slip is in this one. Uh, the first thing I see here is Set Fire to the Gods by Sarah Rosh and Kristen Simmons. And if you don't know, Kristen was our, um, the author we had for our group read for uh, Mary Book Miss for 2020. And so if you want to go and check out her live show where we, we chatted with her, it'll I'll put it up here. Um, but I wanted to get this and yeah it sounded interesting there's a map inside all right this says ash is descended from a long line of gladiators and she knows the brutal nature of war firsthand but after her mother dies in an arena she vows to take action against her fire god whose temper has stripped her country of its resources madoc madoc grew up fighting on the streets to pay his family's taxes, but he hides a dangerous secret. He doesn't have the Earth God's powers like his opponents. His elemental gift is something else, something that hasn't been seen in centuries. When an, attempt, when an attempted revenge plot goes dangerously long, Ash inadvertently throws the two gods into a conflict that can only be settled by deadly, lavish gla gladiator games, landing Maddox directly in Ash's path. She realizes that his powers are the weapon her rebellion needs, but Maddox won't jeopardize his family, regardless of how intrigued he is by the beautiful warrior. But when the gods force Maddox's hand, he and Ash uncover an ancient war that will threaten more than one immortal. It will unravel the world. Okay, next up we have Bill Bryson, A Guide for Occupants, The Body. And I, I've recently gotten another book by him. Ew. There's something in here. That's just nasty. It's actually stuck to the page. I don't know what that is. Uh, anyway, I, I recently got another book by him, and it was like pretty much about everything. <laughs> Uh, this says, Bill Bryson once again proves himself to be an incomparable companion as he guides us through the human body, how it functions, its remarkable ability to heal itself, and unfortunately the ways it can fail. Full of extraordinary facts, your body made a million red blood cells since you started reading this. The irresistible, Brian-esque antidotes, the body will lead you to a deeper understanding of the miracle that is life in general, and you in particular. As Bill Bryson writes, we pass our existence within this wobble of flesh and yet take it almost entirely for granted. The body will cure that indiffer indifference with the generous doses of wondrous, compulsively readable facts and information. As addictive as it is comprehensive, this is Bryson at his very best, a must-read owner's manual for every body. And I thought it sounded interesting. And oh my goodness, this text is tiny. <laughs> Okay, next up we have Lies You Never Told Me by Jennifer Donaldson. And this says, everyone has secrets. Can you guess theirs? 
Elise. She plays sweet and innocent, but you know what they say. It's the nice ones you have to watch out for. Catherine. New town, fresh start, but what exactly is she running from? Gabe. Are the rumors true about him, or is someone really out to get him? Where's the smoke? There's fire. Sasha. She's not over Gabe. Is she plotting to get him back or get revenge? And uh, Kirkus Review says, Fatal Attraction meets Big Little Lies. Then we have another Bill Bryson book. This one is The Road to Little Dribbling. More notes from a small island. And this says, In 1995, Bill Bryson got into his car and took a weeks-long motoring trip around Britain to celebrate the green and kindly island that had become his adopted country. The book that came out of that journey, Notes from a Small Island, is uproarious and endlessly endearing, one of the most acute portrayals of the United Kingdom ever written. I think I actually have that book somewhere in a box, maybe. Okay, anyway, my battery slashing. Two decades later, now a British citizen, Bryson sets out to discover, rediscover the wondrously beautiful, endearingly unique country that he thought he knew, but doesn't altogether recognize anymore. Following, but not too closely, the longest straight line possible on the island, from Bognor Regis to Cape Wrath, Bryson shows us, as only he can, every pub, tiny town, castle, and foible along the way. Once again, with his matchless homing instinct for the funniest and quirkiest, his unerring eye for the idyllic, sorry, idiotic, the ridiculous and the scandalous, Bryson gives us perspective insight into all that is best and worst about Britain today. And that is, oh wait, that's not the last thing in this box, but my battery's flashing so I need to change that out and I will be right back. Okay, sorry if the angle changed. The next book in this box is actually a graphic novel. This is The Sandman by Neil Gaiman. This is Overture, illustrated by J.H. Williams III. And I haven't had a whole lot of luck with Neil Gaiman yet, but I thought maybe just... <laughs> I was gonna say maybe, just maybe, I'll like his graphic novels. And I was just opened something up so I could like show you an example of the art. This is what I opened up to. <laughs> just black. I mean, the art looks pretty cool. So here's hoping that I like this. This is actually the 30th anniversary edition. Yeah, so I'm gonna try this out. Also got me a little coupon here that can you also use if, uh, that I can also use as a bookmark. It gives me a five dollars off my next order. That is all that is in that box. Uh, as far as the coupon goes, one thing I have seen about these coupons is they will not work if if there's some other sale going on. If the sale, like you can only use this or like the 15% off your total pack, like total order or the whatever the sale is, it's either that or this. So something to keep in mind there. Okay, now we're down to the final box. And that is this one right here. So let me open this up. Okay, we have some paper. You know there was no packing slip in that last one? I don't see a packing slip in this one unless it's underneath everything. Okay, so the first book that I have in here is Burn Our Bodies Down by Rory Power and she is the author of Wilder Girls and I wasn't the absolute biggest fan of Wilder Girls. It was just a little too gory and weird for me. Uh, this has an imprint of like a, I don't know if you can see it, it's a lighter. Anyway, uh, I thought I'd give her, uh, Rory Power another chance and see what I thought about this one. This says, ever since Margot was born, it's been just her and her mother. No answers to any of Margot's questions about what came before. No history to hold on to. No relatives to speak of. Just the two of them, stuck in their run-down apartment, struggling to get along. 
But that's not enough for Margot. She wants family. She wants a past. And she just found the key she needs to get it. A photograph pointing her to a town called Faline, pointing her home. Only when Margot gets there, it's not what she bargained for. Margot's mother left for a reason, but was it to hide her past or was it to protect Margot from what's still there? The only thing Margot knows for sure is that there's poison in their family tree and the roots are dug so deeply into Faline that no, now that she's there, she might never escape. Interesting. So I'm curious to see how I will like that one. Then we have Keeper of the Lost Cities Legacy. This is book eight. I think I have the first seven already. Ooh, those end pages. I really love this series and my uh, little Twitter buddy read group. We're going to be buddy reading this whole series very soon. So I'm looking forward to rereading the ones that I have read and reading for the first time the ones that I haven't. Okay, so I pulled up on Goodreads so that I could tell you better about Keeper of the Lost Cities because it has been a minute since I've read it. 12 year old Sophie Foster has a secret. She's a telepath, someone who hears the thoughts of everyone around her. It's a talent she's never known about how to explain. Everything changes the day she meets Fitz, a mysterious boy who's, who appears out of nowhere and also reads minds. She discovers there's a place she does belong and that staying with her family will place her in grave danger. In the blink of an eye, Sophie is forced to leave behind everything and start a new life in a place that is vastly different from anything she has ever known. Sophie has new rules to learn and new skills to master and not everyone is thrilled that she has come home. There are secrets buried deep in Sophie's memory, secrets about who she really is and why she was hidden among humans that other people desperately want, would even kill for. In this page-turning debut, San Shannon Messenger creates a riveting story where one girl must, make, must figure out why she is the key to her brand new world before the wrong person finds the answer first. And I absolutely have loved the series up to where I'm at. So I think we got through four or five, like the first four or five books. So I'm excited to continue. Next up we have Be Not Far From Me by Mindy McGinnis. And this is a lot shorter than I expected it to be. It's only 231 pages. This says, the world is not tame. Ashley knows this truth deep in her bones, more at home with trees overhead than a roof. So when she goes hiking in the Smokies with her friends for a night of partying, the falling dark and creaking trees are second nature to her. But people are not tame either, and when Ashley catches her boyfriend with another girl, drunken rage sends her running into the night, stopping only by a nasty fall into a ravine. Morning brings the realization that she's alone and far off trail lost in undisturbed forest and with nothing but the clothes on her back ashley must figure out how to survive with the red streak of infection creeping up her leg and minnie mcginnis i know she has a way of coming up with some twisted stuff so i'm really interested to see how that goes okay i also picked up castle in the air by diana Wynn jones this is a companion to howl's moving castle uh, so I imagine that it could be read separately. I'm just going to go ahead and read what's on the back here because I don't think it'll be anything spoilery for Howl's Moving Castle. Young merchant, oh, it says his dreams are coming true. Young merchant Abdullah leads a humble life, or he did until a stranger sold him a threadbare and disagreeable magic carpet. Now Abdullah is caught in the middle of his grand daydreams. Waking one night in a luxurious garden, he meets and falls instantly in love with the beautiful and clever flower in the night. But a wicked djinn sweeps the princess away before Abdullah's eyes, leaving the young man no choice but to follow. This is no ordinary quest, however, for the flower in the night isn't all the djinn has stolen. Abdullah will have the so-called help of the cankerous carpet, a cranky genie in a bottle, a dishonest soldier, and a very opinionated black cat. Will this motley crew be able to find the djinn's mysterious dwelling and rescue a castle full of princesses? 
and I'm really excited to have Howl's Moving Castle, which I, I got in uh, an Alcrate Junior box, and now I'm really excited to have this as well. Okay, next up we have, <laughs> my friend Clint's going to scream <laughs> when he sees this. I got The Brave by James Bird, which is one of Clint's all-time favorite books. And uh, James Bird is actually the husband of Adriana Mather, who did like How to Hang a Witch and Killing November. And those are, um, or Hunting November. I can't remember which one was first. Anyway, um, Adriana Mather was actually the first author that did uh, a live show with us for season of thon. Uh, I'll link that up here as well if you want to go and check out that with her. That was a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, this is one of Clint's favorites. This one is middle grade and I think it follows an indigenous boy. Um, this says, Colin can't help himself. He has a unique condition that leads him to count every letter spoken to him. It's a quirk that makes him a prime target for bullies and a continual frustration to the adults around him, including his father. When Colin is asked to leave yet another school, his dad decides to send him to live in Minnesota with the mother he's never met. She is Ojibwe, Ojibwe and lives on a reservation. Colin arrives in Duluth with his loyal dog, Seven, and quickly finds his mom and his new home to be warm, welcoming, and accepting of his condition. Colin's quirk is matched by that of his neighbor, Orinda, a girl who lives mostly in her treehouse and believes she is turning into a butterfly. With Orinda's help, Colin works hard to overcome his challenges. His real tests come when he must step up for his new friend and trust his new family. And he says this is a very, very moving book. So I'm excited to read it too. And I know Clint is screaming watching this right now. <laughs> okay, the last book that I have in here is actually the fifth book in a series. I have read the first, well, I read like a prequel novella and the first book in the series and really enjoyed them. So I'm, I'm looking forward to continuing. This is the fifth book in the Jane Hawk series. It is The Night Window by Dean Koontz. And I pulled it up like, to tell you what the whole series is about. It says, Jane Hawk, an FBI agent on leave, attempts to bring down a conspiracy causing happy, sound of mind people to commit suicide. And uh, I found it very interesting. And so, yeah. When I saw this come up, I grabbed it. It's a big chunker. But I'm looking forward to reading it. And that is the last book in this whole haul. Let's see. So only 23 books in this haul. Not nearly as crazy as what I did for my last <laughs> book outlet haul with like 65 books. Yeah. <laughs> if you haven't seen that, I'll link that up here to go check out. Have you guys read any of these books? Did you like them? Did you not? Comment down below and let me know. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, click that subscribe button down below. And until next time, remember to always be completely you. Bye!